So once you get your papers, we want to fold them in half horizontally. You want to make sure your paper is lined up perfectly and then push down to create the crease. Then once you unfold it, we're going to take our ruler and from the crease, since this is our foreground pieces, we want to measure three inches from the crease. Okay, so that's why I have it lined up at six. And then another three inches. This should give us about half of an inch from the edge of the paper. Again, three inches between these marks. I'm also going to do the same thing at the top of our paper. Okay, marking it again at three, and then another three inches. And then we want to do the same thing on the other side of the crease. So depending on the ruler that you're using, the ruler I just used, um, the inch started at, it didn't start at the end of the ruler, whereas this ruler, the inch starts at the end of the ruler, okay, to make three inches. Once you create your marks at the top and the bottom, you're going to use your ruler to line up these marks and lightly, okay, barely putting any pressure on your pencil, draw a vertical line going through these marks. Okay, so then your crease, you should have three sections to your left and three sections to your right, okay? We're going to do the same thing for your other spread. So again, fold your paper, and we are going to do the same thing to our two other foreground spreads. So right now you can see me folding my foreground spread. I'm making sure that it's even lining up. I want to keep in mind my craftsmanship. Um, I'm also using my metal ruler to make sure that my middle fold is perfectly creased. Then you can unfold it. We have a spread to the left, a spread to the right. So now we need to make our measurements. Again, starting at the six, I need to make a mark at three, and then the end of my ruler so that there's a three inch gap in between. And then using my ruler to create a vertical line going through both points. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, from the crease, three inches out, and then another three inches, so at six. Make another mark at three and six at the bottom, and then use your ruler again to create those vertical lines. Repeat this process one more time for your third and final foreground page. Once we finish our foreground pages, we're going to go to our background pages. So these pages, we're doing the same kind of process where we're folding it, but notice how these are a little bit longer, meaning that our measurements will be a little bit different. So we're going to be doing four inches, okay? So I started at eight, making a mark at four, and then the end of my ruler, doing the same thing at the top and the bottom. Okay, and then using my ruler to create a vertical line going through these two marks. And then one more time by our flaps. So again, we have four inches and four inches on this one spread, and it'll be the same on the other side. So again, you're gonna take your metal ruler, line it up to your crease. Okay, this ruler starts at the end, so I'm gonna make a mark at four. But also, if you're using a different ruler, make sure you're starting at the inch. Okay, so we want to make a mark at four and eight, four and eight, and then use your rulers to create a vertical line going through both of these points. Okay, so we have our little flaps on either side of our spreads. And you want to repeat this process for the other two background spreads. Pictured above, you can see my foreground spreads and my background spreads stacked upon each other. You should have three of each, and then you're ready to start planning out your books. What I do recommend is labeling each of your books before you start transferring your plans into your final copies. So what I'm going to do now is label this one one, 
and this one over here too. Okay, because where the crease is, this is spread one, and this is spread two. So it's the same for our foreground. So this is foreground one and foreground two. Okay, so then I can take these two and I can put them on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing for the next couple spreads. So if that was one and two, then we're gonna do three. Okay, the crease is where the page changes. So this is four, so I'm gonna put four on this flap. Again, this just helps you so you know what you're drawing, what page that you're on. So this would be three and four. And then last but not least, we have five and six. Okay, and then five and six. Again, so when I'm working on five, I know which one's lining up with what. Your even number should be on the right side and your odd number should be on the left side. And then we can start planning our book. So it's up to you what page you want to start on. And also if you wanted to work on the cover, you can work on the cover first as well. Can't wait to see how your books come out. Speaking of covers, I started with drawing out everything and then I went in with colored pencil. Finally, I went in with my second media, which was marker. One thing that I do recommend is numbering the colors that you use so you know which ones to kind of go back into, especially if you have a theme going on in your book that you want colors to kind of be consistent throughout and have a specific color scheme. For example, purple is my mom's favorite color. I also wanted to show the blues that I was feeling in the frames, um, all the different values of blue when it got darker, but then also the purple when it got better. Um, for my backgrounds, I kind of cohesively thought of green being a repetitive color throughout my scenes. For example, the doctor relating scenes, as you see my mother in her bed, the background is this green color. Whereas when you go into a couple more pages, we kind of have that green repeating in the background to show that she's still in the hospital at this point. Despite having these backgrounds that were more realistic to what I was experiencing, I also wanted to show my inner struggles throughout this entire process as well. Um, from my emotions to different periods that I specifically remembered happening. And then lastly, my final page, bringing back that purple to kind of show that glow um, from my mother. And then this was the first photo that I took of her when she returned home. So it ended on a happy note. Once you finish everything, we do want to refer back to the practice carousel books to remember how to cut out our foreground pieces. Then you're going to go straight into creating your cover, cutting out your cover. Notice how I extended the coloring so that when my folds of my flap, they kind of, they don't show any white space. I'm thinking about my craftsmanship. And then we are going to glue our covers to our chipboard, just like we did for our practice books. You're also going to use the practice video to assemble your pages. It's the same process. Um, so again, flip your covers over, use your glue stick or regular glue to apply to the back of your covers. Then you can put down your chipboard pieces line up the corners to where the diagonals are and then the edges of the chipboard will go to the edge of the inside of your book then you want to put your glue on the flaps as well as on the chipboard and then fold these back again notice how my cover um, i extended the colors so that they fold over and then i don't have any white space showing And then just hold this down so that you know until it's 
enough where it can dry okay. You can also use binder clips if you don't want to hold it, but it should dry fairly quickly. That little white space is where we're going to put our duct tape to combine both books, just like we did when we created our sketchbooks. So I'm going to put this one on the side for now and repeat the same process for our back cover. Again, use your glue stick or a bottle of glue, whatever your preference is. Apply the glue to the back of your cover as well as to your chipboard. Then make sure you line it up to the straight edge, completely straight on your left side. But then on your right side of the back cover, okay, again straight, where the corners meet the diagonal, it should line up perfectly. Then you want to take your glue again, apply it to the flaps and your chipboard. And then fold them over and either hold it down with your fingers for a little bit or you can use binder clips again for this process. Again, notice how my colors overlap so that my craftsmanship will be nice and neat and I won't have any white areas showing when I assemble my cover together. And then you have your two covers. Lastly, we just need to use duct tape to put it together. So what you want to do is to choose one of the colors of duct tape that I have up at the front. Um, for me, I'm going to use purple since that was one of my colors in my color scheme. It's the one that represents my mother, happiness, all that jazz. So I'm going to take a piece that is slightly longer than either of my covers. Your covers are six inches long. So I want my tape to be at least seven inches. Then I'll take some scissors and I will cut the tape. And just like we did our sketchbooks at the beginning of the year, you wanna first put down your piece of tape sticky side up. And then where the two white strips are, you want to line up where the color and the white meet each other is the edge of your tape. So you can see at the bottom and at the top, I have my duct tape right on that line. I'm using my pencil to hold down the duct tape for me, doing the same thing with my back cover where the white and the color meet. Then I'm going to overlap my piece of duct tape on the top and the bottom. And we wanna do the same thing now, but for the top. So I'm gonna grab another piece of tape, a little bit longer than the length of our books. And then you're gonna lay this right on top, making sure that it's lining up nicely. And then flip this over and fold this in. And then just like with our practice books, we want to glue our pages in on the inside. So the back of one will go on the back of your front cover. So I'm gonna take my glue once again, and I'm going to apply glue to the entire cover, everything except for the duct tape. You don't need to put any glue on the tape. If it gets on there a little bit, it'll be fine. And then I'm going to hold this down. And again, if you want, you could put binder clips on here or you can just press it down with your fingers until it dries. Keep in mind your craftsmanship. And then we're going to repeat the same process for the back cover. So again, applying my glue stick all over. And then take spread six, line it up so your craftsmanship is nice and neat. And then use your fingers to press it down. And again, you could use binder clips or you can just use the pressure from your fingers to make sure it's applying neatly. And 
And there you have your carousel books. So when you open them, you can see the whole thing. Hope you enjoyed this process and I can't wait to see how your carousel books turned out. Here you can see the final product of my carousel book for my mother. Enjoy! I also have another carousel book that I created in high school. Uh, this example does only have five pages, so it's slightly different than ours. Um, this one's a little bit harder to open to, um, so adding the six page made it a little bit easier to read, um, but you can use this as an example as well.